Um, from the game, I think the defense played really well. Um, I think we created a lot of negative negative plays. Um, I think we played sound. We ran to the ball and um, we showed people that we was really physical. But I still think we left a lot of plays out there that could have been made. stood out to me defensively is New Mexico State had that one really good drive in the first quarter, and then uh, you held them to minus one yards in the second quarter. So uh, just how pleased were you with the defensive response after they went, you know, pretty pretty easily down the field on that one drive? Um, I just think um, with times like that when things hit the fan with, with our defense and with our team, um, we, we link together and we don't flinch, and it works out perfectly for us, and as you've seen, Second quarter, we came on and we did pretty impressive. What do you see out of Tifa? I mean, what does he bring to your defensive team and how the strip sack uh, Saturday night? Yeah, Saturday night. Um, I think Tifa is a game changer. I think um, he brings a lot of intensity for our defense. Um, for instance, I love how he sacks the quarterback. Um, he um, he has it to where um, people will slide to him and he gets other guys op um, opportunities to get sacks as well. So I think. Tip is a really good game changer for our team. How was the was the rushing defense? Did you make a step forward than they feel like the Michigan State game? Um, absolutely. I think um, from these last two weeks compared to last year, we showed people that um, we can still st um, we can stop the run, and we're not the same team as we was last year. Uh, I've heard several players talk about the rushing defense is totally different this year under Keith Patterson. What's the difference from last year? Um, I just think it's a um, mentality deal. We know um, that last year we we failed to um, stop the run. So um, one thing we do um, all the time in practice, we do this drill called like 907 inside run. And I doing that every day, I think that gave our team a mentality to um, stop the run and even run the ball as well. So I think that's why everything's happening where it's going right now. Better Wally, can you talk a little bit about your experience here at Utah State? You were involved in the, the accident and that the guys were in out there at one time in your life and there and what it's been like for you in this career at Utah State to play and go along and stuff? Um, it been um, a grateful opportunity. You know, um, my freshman redshirt year that um, in 2015 in June, right before the season started, I had gotten a car accident with um, Travis Seafelt, Edmund, John Taylor, and his girlfriend. And um, it made me appreciate life more. It made me um, become a better man and it made me more closer to God, and and it made me um, be more grateful for this opportunity that God gave me to um, play at Utah State and play for the Aggie Brotherhood. Did you have to overcome quite a bit physically from that? Did you? Uh, definitely. Um, that 2015 season, I, I I couldn't play because I had a fracture on um, pelvis, and um, it affected me for almost two years. So it did affect me a lot physically, but I'm fine now. Was it even still a little bit of a factor into last year? Right. Um, no, not by then. It was no, done. it was done by then, but it, it went into kind of like the 2016 season a little bit, but I'm fine now. What do you remember from that day? Actually, uh, <laughs> I remember everything, um, be, everything before the accident, but everything after the accident, I don't remember. Like, I remember, um, we went to one of our team in house, Jordan Nielsen house, to, um, shoot some guns in the air, um, we rode some horses, um, went farming, and it was a great time. But once we was going back to Jordan Nielsen house, we got in a car accident. And I literally don't remember anything after that until waking up in the hospital. Looking at some of the pictures, how fortunate you were able to be talking to us and playing the game you love. I'm I'm really fortunate. I'm really grateful. You know, um, I honestly don't know why um, God kept me here. And then looking from the pictures. I, I don't know how I'm still alive, but I'm really grateful for the opportunity that God gave me to still be here and play the game that I love. How long were you in the hospital? I'm um, just three days. Oh, okay, you were okay. With your, the pelvis was the baby. Yeah. Okay. Last week during this press conference, uh, Coach Wells said your game against Michigan State was the best he's seen you play in your Utah State uniform. You followed that up with another nice game against uh, New Mexico State. How much does that come down to? Just the strike that you've made, and uh, you being a senior, and just really wanting to go out with, with the fame your last season. Um, um, one thing that I've been um, trying to do this year is just be selfless. You know, not worry about myself, not try to worry about individual goals. I try to worry about what can I do 
for the team to be better for the team and the team concept. For instance, like me, I, I watch more film. Um, I sacrifice a lot more than I did last year, and it's, we, it's really paying off individually, but at the same time, I'm doing it in a team concept. I just looked at the stats of Tennessee Tech. Their quarterback's about their best, one of their best runners. I mean, do you see that in film, or do you see what they try to do with him? Um, yes, I think um, the biggest threat, I mean, I haven't watched too much film on them yet, but what I've seen, I think the biggest threat on their offense is their quarterback. He likes to get out the pocket, so I think one thing we're going to emphasize on, like we did um, the previous week, is um, contain the QB. What changes do you have to make in a, in a schedule? I mean, this is a very short week. You play on Thursday night, coming off Saturday night. What changes do you have to make in your, I guess, personal schedule, if you will, like for just regards to getting ready for another game on Thursday night? Um, I don't think we got to change too much. I just think we just don't think – I just think we don't have that much time to do like what we did last week is to have a Monday practice, a Tuesday practice. We're, we're now we're like in the end of the week, so now we got to prepare a little bit faster, watch film, like for instance today, like yesterday and stuff like that, so we can be prepared for Thursday. Um, as an offensive perspective, as I said once before, um, I believe we didn't play um, our best game. We were a little sloppy. But the best thing that um, that comes out of that game is we put up 60 points and we have a lot of self-inflicting wounds, you know, shooting ourselves in the foot. And there's a lot of things we can correct um, to, to be on the road to success and um, have more success as an offense. You go through these things, Gerald, it seems like you're out there the first series and, and maybe early, and then it's kind of like we don't see you again for a while. Is that a planned way that they play the running backs, or what's um, going on? Well, you know, our coaches have strategic plans on um, what they think we should do at certain times in the game, and um, you just got to trust your coaches and with the substitutions and how they handle that stuff. So that's all I think about that. Mm -hmm. Is there is there certain packages they feel like you're better at the way they're going to play? Do you think that's um, – Yes, with, like with different backs, we have different styles. So. There are certain plays that complement other backs better than me or or um, Thompson or Toro, so they do their best to put us in where we fit. What's been the biggest thing when you move to running back and playing there? Has it been more of the protection type stuff you have to do? Or, I mean, because probably receiving part is easy for you and running the ball probably when you get it is easier. Is that the biggest part of it? Learning yeah, stuff? learning protection. You got to learn how to read the defense. You got to know if like if a safety is stacked over a backer or stuff like that. You know that backer is coming. You just got to learn how to you know, keep your head on the swivel and read everything fast. Play to the speed of the game. Along with that, I mean, it seems like uh, you guys have a lot of depth at fit running back. I mean, you got over 100 yards. Darwin came in, almost got 100 yards, and then El Toro made some really good plays as well. Just talk about the, the depth in that running back room. Oh, well, you know, every guy is, is gifted in their own way. Like I said, we have different styles. Um, I learned from all of our backs, even the ones that um, get the least amount of reps. You know, we all can contribute to winning, as we did. Um, against New Mexico State, so. Um, what are some of the things that you need to you were talking about how you needed to fix some things on offense uh, from the New Mexico State game? What are some of the things that you really would like to fine tune as an offense this week? Um, I don't want any penalties. Um, you know, penalties before the snap. Pre-snap penalties are, are very dangerous to um, a successful offense, so we got to learn how to, how to um, Stay, stay in the ground, not jump off sides. We got to learn how to play physical, but be fair at the same time and smart. No, um, no holding penalties or anything like that. We got to catch the ball a lot more better. Play catch with the quarterback and the receivers. Running backs, we got to hold on to the ball. You know, protection is the is the most important thing. You know, protecting that ball, and we got to keep our quarterback off the ground. your week like uh, playing a game on Thursday instead of Saturday? Is it, does that, what does that do to you or what, what do you feel uh, about that? Personally, it doesn't change anything. The mindset is always to win. It doesn't change anything. It just come quicker. The game just come quicker, that's all. Do you look at any film of their defense? They gave up over 500 yards in rushing to their last team. 
Oh man, I mean, you gotta you gotta think about it as you know they're still humans. They're still it's still bodies there. You know what I'm saying? So you can't you can't um, go in there thinking like we're just gonna smash. You gotta respect your opponent, but you don't have to fear them. You have to understand that you know anybody is beatable. Um, what we did last week does not matter. It's all about who goes out and play that day, that day and who plays their best game, and that's all that matters. So you think overall that mentality last week of hey we're gonna improve. Uh, it's our, it's all about us and all that, rather than the, the revenge game against New Mexico State. All that worked pretty well. Do you think the way it, you guys handled that? Yes, I believe we handled it well. You know, it's all you know. It's do your job, dodge. It's a, it's a little um, acronym we like to say. Do your job. If you do your job, then everything will take care of itself. The win will take care of itself. The stats, everything. You just do your job. Okay, really proud of our players uh, for how they performed Saturday night. It, uh, it was good. There's a lot to clean up, um, a lot to be very, um, a lot to, for the players, I think, to be very openly um, critical of themselves and try to hold themselves to a high standard. I thought we played pretty good on defense. Um, you know, all the takeaways are a major plus. The sacks, the TFLs, uh, those were good. Um, you know, the yards per carry, we held them down pretty good, got a goal there. And, but just overall, um, still some communication issues, still some lining up alignment issues. Um, didn't get as many three and outs as we wanted, so there's some a lot to clean up. You know, offensively, I think there was some back and forth to a rhythm and not being in a rhythm. Um, it doesn't overly concern me, but I don't. I thought we played average on offense. Um, I thought we ran the ball very well. I thought our O line did a nice job. I thought both our backs played really well. Um, Darwin and, and, G and Gerald Bright, El Toro got in there and ran the ball well. Um, but we were just okay on the perimeter blocking. Um, we dropped a few balls. Uh, we missed a couple passes. We gave up a couple hits uh, in the pass protection game. So certainly, uh, trust me on this, there's a lot to clean up um, and be better at. And I think our players want us to coach them hard and we'll certainly do that. Now on the flip side, I think we played excellent in special teams. Uh, really, really good. Obviously, the field goal team and the performance of Dominic Eberly, which, by the way, congratulations to him, Mountain West uh, Player of the Week, and, and Aaron Wade as well. So um, big props to both of those guys. But uh, the field goal team did a, did a phenomenal job. Uh, I thought the kickoff return team, uh, not just with the touchdown, but with the other return, did a nice job. Got a lot of knockdowns. Um, punt return, I mean, Jordan Nathan's done a really nice job. We've done a good job of holding guys up. And then, you know, I, I'll share with you guys kind of what I shared last night in the team meeting. We had eight guys um, play 20-plus snaps uh, in the special teams game alone, uh, just in the special teams portion of the game. We had another five guys play 14 or more. So you got 13 guys on your team that played 14 snaps or more in special teams in addition to offense and defense. And um, a handful of those guys were starters um, on offense and defense. Um, that's, that's the glue of our team. That, to me, epitomizes Utah State football and the buy-in in terms of special teams and how we're going to play. And I was really proud of those guys, and I thought we did a nice job. Now, and in saying that, there's some penalties we got to clean up in special teams, and there were probably a couple penalties that should have and could have been called. So a lot's to point out as we go into this week. It's a short week, Tennessee Tech. Um, as I look at them, um, I like their freshman quarterback. I think he's got a little moxie to him. Um, he looks like, to me, he's tough, durable kid um, that throws a very catchable football. Um, the back has done some nice job, uh, nice stuff running the ball. Um, then I think on defense, I think you know they're strong up the middle. They got some big, good-looking bodies. The two D tackles, the two linebackers, both safeties. You look at them up the middle, and and um, they're physical, um, well put together guys, and and uh, run to the ball well. But this is a short week, and for us to come off a late game, you know, Saturday night, um, and to have an abbreviated practice schedule and meeting schedules and all that. Um, this will end up being a lot about us and our preparation, how our players handle it, how our coaches handle it, and how we prepare our guys, and our guys really buying in um, to moving right on to the next game and the next opportunity and a chance to be just 1-0 this week. And that's all our guys are worried about, get to Thursday night and find a way to be 1-0. And so 
um, that challenge has been laid out and, and detailed out, and I, our guys are already on to Texas, uh, Tennessee Tech, and uh, and watching their tape last night, and and uh, certainly been a bunch in the complex this morning. So, go ahead and open it up with any questions, and Al, won't you go ahead and start us off? I was going to ask you about Dominic Everly because I remember the first year he was around here. He, there was Stella Thompson was here, and he was kicking and all of that. Did you? Did you ever, I mean, really, is, I don't know if it's a fair question, did you ever really anticipate he'd be this good? I mean, you, you know. No, I, I did not anticipate it, but I can't, I can't honestly say that, that, you know, to answer that direct question, I can't say any of us anticipated. But, um, you know, the, the, the neat thing about Dom is he is such a driven young man. Um, he's structured. His life is structured. Um, the guy is, I said it the other night, he's a grinder. Kind of laughed at myself when I said that. I mean, a little kicker from Germany, you know, a grinder. But the guy, he lifts, uh, he kicks. I mean, he studies his tape. Um, that just the way he he acts in the off season, that kind of gives me a little bit of that, um, and you know, adjective to use with him. You know, the other thing that you kind of think of when he came here as a walk on. I mean, the guy's waiting tables at a restaurant, and he's working, and he's working the hours he's working in here, and he's making ends meet, paying for his school, and that's all before he, you know, he won the job. And then we made him come into training camp last year. He probably won the job in the spring. We made him re-win it again in training camp, and then I finally awarded him a scholarship, and then he went out and made me look smart. You know, I had a really good season, and... He had a really good season. Um, and then he's obviously started off very hot and, and doing a nice job. But the guy is, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't take pats on the back. He doesn't, he doesn't need people to tweet at him because he doesn't look at it anyway. Um, you know, he just is a driven guy. And, and uh, he cares about being great, cares about being a great teammate. And just to see the reaction of our guys towards him is, I think, kind of priceless, to be honest with you, because kickers can kind of alienate themselves at times. Um, some of that's the nature of the position because of how they practice and how we practice them, I and that's very, very natural. And um, and I'm not saying all of them do, but he he is just involved in so much stuff with our guys, and I think that's why you see a genuine care and um, friendship among our guys with, and their reaction to his success. Is the connection of his kicking coach Brad Bond to Utah State why he came here? I think it was it a part of, of a part of the reason. Yeah, yeah. He broke some of Brad's records too. That's kind of well, neat yeah. to see. Yeah. Did, now, did you did Brad reach out to you about him? Or yeah, that, yeah, you? yeah. We I've had a connect. Obviously, Brad and I yeah. played together, so we got a connection there. And certainly, he's done a nice job of helping train him. But and um, has had a hand in in Dominic's success. There's no question. You talked about Wally last week, how the Michigan State game was probably his best game as an Aggie. I followed it up with another big game against New Mexico State with the two fumble recoveries, six, six tackles. Uh, what's the biggest thing that you've seen from him from junior to senior season? He's, he's certainly brought, elevated his game to a new level, it seems like. I think the biggest thing I've seen from Wale from his junior to his senior season is just the increased amount of opportunity that we've given him and he's come through. Um, he had a good junior year, um, and he's started out, you know, I think pretty hot in his senior year so far, but it's just been an increased amount of reps. Um, I see in, in him a very driven individual, um, a very passionate individual about his craft, about being great at pass rushing and stopping the run and being very technique sound. He cares about that. Um, you know, I, there's a special spot in my heart for him. Um, I, you know, I remember um, he's the last kid we took in the 2014 signing class, um, the very last one we made the decision on, um, and took him. And then to, you know, knowing he is a developmental kid in this program, he, you know, as an outside backer, we knew we'd try probably end up moving him to D end. And what he did in the weight room, the setback he had with the car wreck, everything that he's done since then has been, uh, you know. To me, big time. He's a great teammate. He's a good student. He's great in the community. Um, cares about his teammates. He kind of epitomizes to me Utah State football. What about uh, 
this you talk about depth with this team to a guy like Wade you know really didn't play much against Michigan State defensively and then all of a sudden becomes a star in this game yeah and that's I think that's another thing that I'm so proud of our team um, and we had I think right at 10 guys that did not suit up Saturday night that were in the two deep and um, you know a couple guys that um, had to miss because of funerals a couple guys that um, you know injured Aaron Dalton for the season and and um, when you look at you know the depth that we had in the secondary which was very thin to um, to see a guy like Aaron Wade step up and 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 get that start and and to play the way he did and um, really I think I think it it just highlights Aaron you know more than anything um, the job that is his DB coaches did with him. They challenged him early in the week. He met the challenge. He took the challenge. Um, and uh, I think he stood up and, and, and did a really, really nice job. And he had a big game. And that, to me, tells you a little bit about the kid's character and his, and his, um, his want to and his focus. And, and then again, I mean, um, we had several guys step up and increase roles this weekend. And I think it does speak volumes to the depth that we have and that we've created, but I also think it speaks volumes about Aaron. Coach, we heard your players talk about this when they were in here, but for you as a coach, when you play a game on Saturday and then you play a game on Thursday, how does that change your preparation for, for the week? Well, it alters it. You know, it alters our staff preparation and alters our player, our the way we practice and how we practice. And um, I've researched it fairly well. And we, we've also had a fairly successful short week schedule um, the last five years. Um, I haven't missed two days yet. This is the first time we've missed two days. We've been on a, a six day a week, we missed one day nine times, I believe, right? Um, well, in Friday to Thursday, you know, Saturday to Friday, those kind of games, we've never lost two days in the week. But yeah, it alters it. Um, you know, the key to doing that is getting as much preparation as you can for your opponent, first of all. Um, you have to have the right amount of um, um, physical contact in practices, um, good on good, the right amount of scout team work. Um, you know, lifting and conditioning are altered this week. Um, you know, all, there's, a, there's a handful of things. Making sure we get them fresh to the game, making sure we're mentally and emotionally fresh for Thursday night. We're physically as good as we can be coming off a short week, but yet we've also had a little bit of physical preparation. Um, our Wednesday, our day before schedule, may be the altered the most. We're going to do a little bit more work on Wednesday. So Thursday's Thursday, game day's going to be the same, and and uh, we'll be we'll be ready to go Thursday night. My biggest uh, defensive takeaway is that New Mexico State moved the ball pretty seamlessly on that one drive in the first quarter. And your defense just flat out took over the game, flipped field position. New Mexico State had minus one yard in the second quarter. So how pleasing was it to see that mentality after New Mexico State, you know, kind of went down the field pretty pretty easily on that one touchdown drive? Well, they're a they're a they're a good team and they got good players. I mean, I saw them go down the field against a Big Ten team a handful of times, um, and so sometimes that's going to happen. But I think the reaction by our coaches and the reaction by our players, and them stepping up and really playing very, very good. Um, big, big interception, you know, at the end of the second second quarter, getting us the ball back uh, before that and going down and really taking, you know, he had the two touchdown lead and then we were able to score right there with Jalen uh, and Jalen's catches right there before halftime. And um, then I thought, you know, then what I didn't like is on offense, now I'm not really answering your question, um, but I didn't like the way we opened the second half on offense. We started out with two two, three and outs, but the defense was dominating and playing very well and um, kind of kept the game at bay because at that point, you know, they could have they could have snuck back in with a touchdown or a touchdown to field goal and been right into a two possession ball game. And and our defense did a nice job of, of kind of playing very well right there. Well, you, you have a 60 to 13 game and you don't think, although there might not be that many, but the Scarver touchdown came at exactly the time you needed a boost yeah. because you kind of just kicked two field goals and hadn't really finished drives with your offense and they'd scored and all that kind of stuff. I thought that changed the emotion in the stadium and the mojo on the sidelines a little bit.
coach? Any, uh, let's see, did anybody, are you missing any more guys this week? You think in a short week? It didn't look like there was a lot. We didn't get anybody hurt yesterday at practice. <laughs> uh, I think we'll be just fine for Thursday night. Will you? And you might get back some of the guys that missed the game. Yeah, the, we got we got another handful, half a dozen that are day to day. Okay. Yep. And I said this after the game. Aaron Dalton's out for the yeah. year. He had back surgery this week, this past yeah. week. What's that? What's the impact of that? Do you think? I mean, obviously he's. Well, I thought ta- he you know, on, yeah. But how's Heisky doing or whatever? You know, um, I thought Taylor in the in the Michigan State game. Um, you know, we missed a couple of um, pooch punts into inside the twenty. We he missed on a couple. Um, that's really Aaron's specialty. So I think that hurt us a little bit. Um, not having Aaron in, in game one for that. Um, I think that's something that Taylor will get better at. He had a good week of practice. Thought he punted the ball well. I mean, we had just right at 45-yard net punt. I mean, we hadn't had 45-yard net punt here in a while, um, if you go back and look at it. So I thought he did a very nice job punting the ball. We had a nice job covering. Our guys did a really nice We had no pressures on punt. And you know, I expect Tennessee Tech to come after us. I expect them to come be aggressive. And so that's something that we got to work out this week. But uh, I thought our punt team did a nice job, and Taylor did a nice job. Coach, the two players that lost their father, You've lost yours as well. Are you able to go to them and give them advice and bring them a sense of comfort and knowing that what you've been through as well? Um, fair question. I think uh, what's easier for me is to, to look a kid in the eye and put an arm around him and say, I know exactly what you're going through. Um, because I've tried to make a habit of that since I've been the head coach to not say that unless I absolutely know the circumstance. And this is... Um, a situation that I do know, and it's really fresh on my mind. So, yeah, it's a little easier. Um, those kids had a hard week. 